engineers are losing the battle to lower water behind California's crumbling dam by 50 feet before new storm hits on Wednesday, after admitting the waters have only dropped 11 feet in 24 hours. Water level at Lakeville has only been reduced by 11 feet since it reached its capacity on Saturday afternoon. Department of Water Resources had hoped to lower it by 50 feet before storms hit as soon as Wednesday night. Water is being drained from the lake down by the damaged main spillway at a rate of 750 000 gallons per second. It still may not be enough to lower the water levels sufficiently before rain hits which will cause it to rise again. 200,000 residents in California may be displaced for weeks as emergency services race to repair spillways. They left in pure chaos when a sudden evacuation order was issued on Sunday after days of assurances from officials that the situation was safe. Environmental groups predicted the exact chain of events in 2003 but had their fears ignored by officials. Now officials are working to patch up the emergency spillway as water gushes down the damaged main spillway. The brimming lake threatening to topple California's crumbling Oville Dam was drained by just 11 feet in the 24 hours after it overflowed on Saturday. A worrying fraction of the 50 feet it needs to be reduced by before more rain hits the region this week. The water level had lowered to 888 feet shortly before noon on Tuesday, 14 feet less than its 902 feet capacity which was reached over the weekend and pushed water over an emergency spillway which began to collapse under the pressure. Engineers are draining the lake at a rate of 750,000 gallons per second which lowers the level by about a foot every three hours, four inches an hour, but they are not moving fast enough to bring it down to their target of 850 feet by Wednesday. The dam's main spillway, which would normally offset rising water levels in the lake, has been compromised by a gaping hole caused by erosion which engineers are trying to fix while still allowing water to pass down it. The continuing flow of water will worsen the erosion but they have been left no choice given the weakness of the emergency spillway. If the lake exceeds its capacity before the spillways are repaired, it could send a 30 feet wall of water cascading into Butte, Sutter and Yuba counties below it. Some 200,000 residents were evacuated in anticipation of such an event on Sunday and have taken refuge in makeshift shelters where they could remain for weeks before it is safe to return. They fled when authorities were finally forced to issue an emergency evacuation order after days of claiming the situation was safe. The evacuees have since told of their hurried escape, describing the scene of entire communities fleeing in their packed up cars as pure chaos. Everyone was running around. It was pure chaos. All of the streets were immediately packed with cars, people in my neighborhood grabbing what they could and running out the door and leaving, Maggie Cabral told KFSN. The emergency situation has been in developing for a week and began last Tuesday when officials were forced to acknowledge a gaping hole in the main spillway. They halted water flow on the spillway to investigate the damage but said at the time there was no immediate threat to the public. The emergency spillway, which had never before been used, was then put to work but soon buckled under the pressure. Because it was backed only by land and soil, authorities were forced to admit that it would likely fail and evacuated the area suddenly on Sunday afternoon. The sudden order after days of, of public assurances that the situation was safe created pandemonium in the town of Oville and others surrounding the dam. Some already had their bags packed and hit the road immediately but others were left to scramble after being told for days that they were in no danger. The chaos was described as a textbook example of why the country needs to invest in infrastructure by White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer on Tuesday as he said President Trump was keeping a close eye on the situation. He has not yet released $162.3 million in disaster assistance that California has requested. Evacuation centers have been set up at a fairgrounds in Chico, California, about 20 miles northwest of Oville, but major highways leading south out of the area were jammed as residents fled the flood zone. J.V. Santiago, 42, 
fled with his wife, two children and several friends to the Oville Dam Visitors Center in a public park above the dam in the danger zone. With blankets, pillows and a little food, Santiago said, we are going to sleep in the car. The sudden evacuation panicked residents, who scrambled to get their belongings into cars and then grew angry as they sat in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic hours after the evacuation order was given. Raj Gill, managing a shell station where anxious motorists got gas and snacks, said his boss told him to close the station and flee himself. But he stayed open to feed a steady line of customers. You can't even move, he said. I'm trying to get out of here too. I'm worried about the flooding. I've seen the pictures, that's a lot of water. A Red Cross spokeswoman said more than 500 people showed up at an evacuation center in Chico, California. The shelter ran out of blankets and cots, and a tractor trailer with 1,000 more cots was stuck in the gridlock of traffic fleeing the potential flooding Sunday night, Red Cross shelter manager Pam Dedich said. But the Department of Water Resources, and the agencies in the line to foot the bill, told the FERC that the spillways could handle 350,000 cubic feet of water per second and there was no danger. Their emergency spillway meets FERC's engineering guidelines for an emergency spillway, wrote John on the Donk, a senior civil engineer with FERC, in 2006. The guidelines specify that during a rare flood event, it is acceptable for the emergency spillway to sustain significant damage. Despite that, the weekend saw the earth and spillways being eroded with flows of just 6,000 to 12,000 cubic feet per second, less than 5% of FERC's supposed safe rate. State officials said in 2008 no significant concerns about the spillway's integrity had been raised in any government or independent review. Also on Monday, it emerged that California Governor Jerry Brown had overlooked the Oville Dam in the $100 billion list of key infrastructure projects filed this month. The list, generated at the request of the National Governors Association after Donald Trump called for $1 trillion of infrastructure investment, is a wish list of projects for Brown, CNBC reported. But while the list mentions the Folsom Dam, some 60 miles south of Oville, as well as flood control in Sacramento, 66 miles away, there is no mention of Oville Dam itself. Instead, most of the suggested upgrades in the three-page document are related to transportation, such as highways, bridges and railroads. Projects to reduce flooding risk in Marysville, 30 miles south of Osville and 50 miles from the dam, are mentioned, as are other levy and dam plans. All are placed below a proposed high-speed rail track between Los Angeles and San Francisco on the list, although the governor's office says that the order of the list does not represent how important the projects are. It added that the list was an initial list of projects. By no means does it represent all of the state's priorities. Brown later said that he was not aware of the 2006 report or the concerns raised about the dam. State Superintendent of Public Instruction Tom Torlakson told administrators in the district that they could apply for aid for the periods that they were shut down. He said schools should not suffer for putting the safety of our students first based on these unprecedented flood dangers. In Butte County, where the Oville Dam is located, 13 of 15 school districts were closed. The county has about 31,000 total public school students. California appears to have been particularly caught off guard by the recent rainfall, which has seen flooding in the north of the state, near where Oval is located, and heavy storms in the south. That's because it has been in a state of so-called permanent drought for five years, a drought that only ended with rain and snowfall in December. That rainfall continues to hit the state in waves, and so concerns remain high about the short-term prospects for the dam. Despite the wet weather, however, the state has extended its water bans until May, although those bans continue to vary from area to area.
Chico Councilman Andrew Coolidge says the seven shelters he visited are packed with residents who describe similar terror on jam-packed roads to safety. While most fled, some had no choice but to remain behind. The chief executive of the Oville Hospital says it is operating normally but that 100 patients have been moved to the hospital's second floor. Hospital CEO Robert Wentz says the hospital took the step Monday morning out of an abundance of caution. The hospital is outside the flood zone below the dam on Oville Lake and sits on a hill. Wentz says evacuating acutely ill people is difficult so it is usually better for them to stay where they are. He says patients will not go back to the hospital's first floor until authorities tell the hospital it is safe to do so. Overnight, state and local officials said the immediate danger had passed with water no longer flowing over the eroded spillway but they cautioned that the situation remained unpredictable. Once you have damage to a structure like that it's catastrophic, acting water resources director Bill Croyle told reporters. But he stressed the integrity of the dam is not impacted by the damaged spillway. A California Highway Patrol spokesman said two planes would fly on Monday to help with traffic control and possible search and rescue missions. At least 250 California law enforcement officers were posted near the dam and along evacuation routes to manage the exodus and ensure evacuated towns don't become targets for looting or other criminal activity, Butte County Sheriff Corey Honia said a lot was still unknown. We need to continue to lower the lake levels, and we need to give the Department of Water Resources time to fully evaluate the situation so we can make the decision to whether or not it is safe to repopulate the area, Ponyas said. Acting Director Department of Water Resources Bill Croyle said officials will be able to assess the damage to the emergency spillway now that the lake level has come down. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. If you like donate to us visit home on the page PayPal.